Okay, welcome to part one uh, of the math section of the SAT course. Um, the layout of this will be uh, much like the English layout, where there will be weekly videos that you are expected to watch and go through. And then when we come to class, we will do tutorials and mini lessons and a lot of practice tests. Okay, so um, part one, the way the math section is laid out. Uh, well, first I should have mentioned, the best way to go through these is I will attach the, the PowerPoint file um, in Canvas. And if you print that out, then you can follow through and go through the examples as I go through them. Um, so if you have not printed it, go ahead and print it out now. Okay. So the way the math section is laid out, part one, okay, you are allowed to use your calculator. Okay, it's 55 minutes and there's 38 questions. Okay, the first 30 are multiple choice and the last eight are fill in the blanks. Okay, part two is 25 minutes and there's only 20 questions. Okay, calculators are not allowed on that section. Okay, 15 are multiple choice and then the five um, fill in the blanks. Okay, so the questions, they increase in difficulty as they go. So if we're, this is the um, answer sheet for section four, okay, of the SAT. And if you look here, the first 30 are all multiple choice, so A, B, C, D, okay. Number one would be the easiest question. Number 30 would be the most difficult question. Okay, and then it'll restart again on the fill in the blank. So 31 will be easy and 38 will be hard. Okay, so uh, we will talk a little bit about basic strategy in class, but just know that every question is worth just one mark. So there's no sense in spending um, you know, 15 minutes maybe on number 30, for instance, okay? Every question is worth the same, uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go, okay? So the first section, okay, the SAT is separated into four uh, different categories and all the questions are spread out throughout the test, but section one is called, they, they call it the heart of algebra. Um, it covers 33% uh, percent of the questions on the, on the math test, so it is the bulk of the test, okay? These type of questions, you'll have to create um, equations, manipulate equations, solve equations. So basically a lot of the time you'll just have to get a variable by itself and solve for that variable, okay? So this section, the heart of algebra, they revolve around linear equations, linear inequalities, okay? So just a quick review. Uh, we know that y equals mx plus b is the form that we see most lines, okay? Where we know m is the slope, B is the y-intercept, okay? So the slope, uh, you all, they might also give you terms like rate, rate of change, or even they might call it rise over run, okay? But these all describe slope, okay? That there, right here is our equation for the slope, okay? Where we are given two points, okay? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, okay? And we'll go through some examples on the next slide, but a positive slope, will make the line go up to the right, okay, and negative slope will make it go down to the right, okay, and our y-intercept, okay, that is um, where we are starting our line on our graph, okay, so other terms that they might use that you'll see are initial value or starting point, okay, and we'll, we will go through a bunch of examples on this, okay, so a quick, some quick, um, just y equals mx plus b type questions they might give, okay, um, if the slope of a line through the points 2, 4, and 0, B is 1, okay, what is the value of B? Okay, now, they will always give us exactly what we need. Okay, a lot of times they'll just word it a little bit differently than we're used to. Okay, but here I know that we're talking about the slope. Okay, they're giving me two points. I'll call this point 2, I'll call this point 1. And they're also giving me what the value of that slope is. So anytime I see the word is, Okay, I know that equals, is means equals, okay? So if I just had my basic equation here, okay, x2 minus x1, okay? And then what I wanna do is just fill in everything that I know, okay? So if I were to do that here, I know that my slope is one, okay? I made this here point two, so y2 becomes four, okay, y1 is b, Okay, and then I'm over x2, which is 2, 
and minus x1, which is the 0. Okay, so once I plug in everything I know, then I just have to go ahead and solve for the unknown variable. So this is how most of these questions are set up in this section of the SAT. So you'll have to either plug numbers into a formula or um, decide your own formulas and then solve for those unknown variables. So if I'm going to solve for b here, okay, um, I'll just rewrite this over 2. Okay, this is, just goes back to our basic um, solving equations. Okay, so I need to get rid of this 2 down here. So if I know if I'm dividing this all by 2, I have to multiply it by 2 for those to cancel. And obviously what I do to one side, I always have to do to the other. So I'll, on the other side, I just have 1 times 2. Okay, so if I simplify that, I just have 2 equals 4 minus b. Okay. This I know is a positive 4, so to get rid of that, I will go minus 4 on both sides. So that will cancel there, and I'll have... I will simplify again. I'll have 2 minus 4, which is minus 2, and that equals minus b. Sorry, that's a little sloppy, but it's minus 2 equals minus b there. Okay, and then I have negatives on both sides, so I just know b equals 2. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video if you have to to get that down. Um, okay, so the next question. Okay. A lot of times they will give us our information and we just have to interpret what they're trying to talk about. So if we read this example, Kathy is a repair technician for a phone company. Each week she receives a batch of phones that she needs to repair. The number of phones that she has left to fix at the end of each day can be estimated with the equation P equals 108 minus 23D, where P is the number of phones left and D is the number of days she has worked that week. So what is the meaning of the value 108 in this equation? Okay, so for a few things to note, okay, we are used to seeing it into y equals mx plus b form, okay, where if we had that here, we could say p is really y that we're used to seeing, and d is really x that we're used to seeing. Okay, so knowing that, if I put this into the form that we're used to seeing, it would be p equals minus 23d plus 108. So knowing that, I know that the B value here, okay, is 108, okay, and all that means in this equation, okay, again, y-intercept can also be called the initial value or even the starting point. So I know that 108 is the initial value of this equation, which just means that at the beginning of each week, she has 108 phones to fix, okay? So if I were to say, D is the number of days, P is the number of phones she has left. So at day zero, if I plugged in um, D equals zero into this equation, I would just have P equals 23 times zero, which is zero, plus 108. So P would be equal to 108. So if she has not gone to, into work that week at all, she has not worked any days, she has 108 phones left to fix. Okay. Okay, so we'll go through some examples um, of the equations of lines and how to graph them. So for this first example here, y equals 3x plus 2. Okay, just a quick review. If I have just a number in front of the x, just like here, I just have 3x. Okay, I can always say that there's an imaginary over 1 there. Okay, so I know my slope equals rise over the run. Okay, and I know that 2 in this equation is my starting value. Okay, so first thing I can do is put a, a point at, at 0, 2. That's my y-intercept. And then my rise over run, my rise is going up. So I go 1, 2, 3. And I go to the right 1, and I can put another point right there. Okay, if I do that again, I will end up here. And if I connect these lines, oops, sorry. if I connect these lines, I get a nice line just like that. Okay. 
So I'll do example two here. Again, there's an imaginary one there. Okay, my starting point now is different. My starting point is at negative one, which is right here. Okay, but my slope is the same. So I go up three, one, two, three, and I go over one. Okay, and I end up right here. I can put another point there, and so on. If I did that again, I would end up here. Okay, again, I connect them, and if it's something else, I don't. Okay, so this represents, we have the same slope. M is the same for the first example and the second example. So when our slopes are the same, okay, our lines will be parallel. Okay, meaning they will never, ever touch. Okay. So if I do this blue example here, okay, again, I always start at my starting point, which again is 2. Okay, now my rise is negative 1, meaning I go down 1, and then I go over 3. And there's my second point. Okay, if I do that again, I go down one, over three, and I end up here. Okay, if I connect those lines, okay, I end up with the blue line that we're looking at. Okay, so there are a relationship between the slopes of perpendicular lines. Okay, the blue line here is perpendicular to both the red and black. Okay, and if you notice, they're also very similar. So here I was 3 over 1. Okay, notice that to get the perpendicular line, I flipped the fraction over to get 1 over 3. And then there was also a negative sign in front of it. Okay, so the slopes of perpendicular lines are what we call negative reciprocals. Okay. I will do the green example here. Okay, this one looks a little bit different than the other ones because I have no x. Okay, so if I were to rewrite this, okay, I could say that y equals, say, 0x minus 3. Okay, anything times 0 is 0, so it doesn't exist. Okay, so if I have 0x, doesn't matter what value of x I have, y is always going to be equal to negative 3. Okay, so if, if x is 1 here, it doesn't matter, it's still minus 3. Minus 3. Okay, so if I continue this, I can continue in both directions, I end up with a horizontal line. Okay, and the yellow example here, x equals 3. Okay, this doesn't have a y, so it doesn't matter what y is in, in this equation, x will always be equal to 3. So even if y is minus 2, x is still 3. And in this sense, in this case, I end up with a vertical line. Okay, so just a quick review there of graphing lines and what the slopes of our lines mean. Okay, so now solving for variable, okay, otherwise known as manipulation. Okay, this is the bulk of what the SAT will ask you to do in this section. Okay, so some questions may ask us for the value of a variable, okay, like in this example below. Okay, we need to manipulate the equation to get that variable by itself. Okay, this is where we want to use inverse operations, okay, and follow bed mass in the reverse order. Okay, so this is a, something that we've been doing since probably grade eight, okay? So if I were to do this example here, hold on. Okay, if I were to do this example here, if x minus one over three equals k, and k equals three, what is the value of x? This is a, 
type of question that we will see often on the SAT. Okay, so the first step again, just like anything else, is we want to plug in everything that we know. Okay, so I don't know x yet, that's what I'm trying to find. So I can rewrite x minus 1 over 3. Okay, but I do know what k equals. Okay, k equals 3. Okay. So, again, I want to get x by itself. Okay. Right now, okay, there are some, sorry, right now there are some imaginary brackets up here. Okay. And the reason they're there is because this whole part on top, x minus 1, is all divided by 3. Okay. So just following bed mass, okay, I'm going to go in the reverse order because I'm solving this. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is get rid of this bottom. Okay, get rid of the, th the 3 as a denominator. So this is x minus 1 basically divided by 3. So my inverse operation of division is multiplication. Sorry, I'm having a pen here. Okay, so I will do 3 times all of this. Okay, those things cancel out, but I know that what I do to one side, I do to the other. Okay, and then when I simplify this, I just have x minus 1 equals 9. Okay, and again, I want x by itself, so I want to get everything attached, get rid of everything that's attached to it. I have a minus 1 here, so my inverse operation is to add 1. So I do it to both sides, and I'm just left with x equals 10. Okay, so d is the correct answer. Okay, now, one thing you can always do Sorry, I'm trying to erase this. It's in the There we go. Okay, the beauty of the SAT is there's one thing, especially in the multiple choice, that we can always do is we can always substitute in the answers. Okay? So if you're really lost on a question, you don't even know where to start, okay, if you have time left, you can just take those answers, plug them in, and eventually you'll stumble upon the right answer. So if I were to do that here, say in this example I had no idea where to start, I was totally lost. Okay? If you have time, take the answers, plug in. So my first um, answer, so A is 2. Okay. If I take x equals 2 and I plug it into this equation, I would have 2 minus 1 over 3 equals 3. Okay, now this obviously wouldn't work out. It would be equivalent to 1 over 3 equals 3, which is not true. So a cannot be the right answer. Okay, if I were to do the same thing for b, okay, plug in x equals 4, I would have 4 minus 1 over 3 equals 3. This equals 3 over 3 equals 3, which is 1 over equals 3, which again is not true, so I can't use b. Okay? And if I were to do this for all of these, if I were to do this for all of these, eventually, I would stumble upon C would not work either. 10 would work. So I know my answer is 10. Okay? So whenever you're lost or you're stuck in the multiple choice questions, substitute in. Okay? And eventually we'll, we'll end up with the right answer. Okay? So two more examples here. Okay, first one I got... 2 thirds x plus 5 equals 1, and it's asking us to, to solve for x. Okay? So, again, what I want to do here, I need to get x by itself. So my first move, okay, is to subtract 5 from both sides, and I get rid of that. Okay? I end up with 2 thirds x equals negative 4, as I go through that. Okay, so 
now I have If I just move the x to the top, I got 2x over 3 equals negative 4. Okay, now, there's two ways I can go about this. Okay, there's the long way, and then there's the, the quicker way. Okay, so the long way says, okay, I have 2x on the top, I want to get rid of the bottom first. So I'll multiply all this by 3. I'll multiply this by 3. Okay, these cancel out. And when I simplify, I end up with 2x equals negative 12. Okay. Then I have 2 times x. So when I'm multiplying, when I to get rid of it, I want to divide. So I divide both sides. And I end up with x equals negative 6. Okay. So that's kind of the two-step process to figuring this out. If you're if you are very comfortable Let me get rid of this. If you are very comfortable solving equations, you'll notice that the first thing we did was multiply by 3, okay, and then I divided by 2. Okay, so I can do this step all at once, okay, and then this would be times 3 over 2. Okay, so the 3s cancel each other out, the 2s cancel each other out, okay, and then I just have to do this math over here. So if I was to multiply these together, again, there's an imaginary 1 there, times 3 over 2, x equals all this stuff. I multiply the tops together here, and I end up with negative 12. Okay, I multiply the bottoms together, I end up with 2, and then again, it equals negative 6. Okay, you will get the right answer both ways, it's just a matter of which makes more sense for you, which is easier for you. Okay. Ultimately, when you're doing this test, okay, if you if you have a way of doing things that always works for you, it makes sense for you, stick with what you know. Okay. So, second example here. Okay. If 4x plus 2y equals 12. What is y in terms of x? Okay, y in terms of x just means I want y equal to everything else. Okay, so if this was say x in terms of y, if we flipped it, okay, it, I would be looking for x equals everything. Okay, so again, I'm solving for a variable. I'm trying to get something by itself. Okay, in this case, it is y in terms of x, which means I need y by itself. Oh, sorry. There we go. Okay, so I need y by itself. So First thing I want to do is I need to move this 4x over. Okay, to do that, okay, I'm going to subtract a 4x from here, subtract a 4x from here. Okay, so I'm left with 2y equals 12 minus 4x. Okay, and then again I have a coefficient of 2 in front of the y, so I will divide everything by 2. left with y equals 6 minus 2x. Okay. Now 6 minus 2x again is not usually the form that we're used to seeing with lines. Okay, So your answer, if this was a multiple choice answer, your answer may be this. Okay. So even if you solved and we got this, and a, b, c, and d didn't have this in it, this would be the answer in one of them. 
Okay, all we're doing is just switching these things around, putting it into y equals mx plus b. Okay. So we will move on. There we go. Okay, so a system of linear equations now. Okay. So a system of equations involve A system of equation involve two equations um, or more, but typically we, we will only do with two right now, where you must solve for one of the variables to get the point that satisfies the equation. Now, um, most of the systems will result in two lines intersecting at a point, say x, y, which becomes our answer. Okay, we can solve these using substitution or elimination. Okay, so if you have already gone through grade um, 10 math, okay, anytime we have a system of linear equations, we will want to use substitution and elimination, which we should be familiar with. Okay, but we will go through a few examples to refresh. Okay, so um, there are three different things that can happen with um, a system of equations. Now, the most um, likely one that we will get is the first one here, where we have two lines that intersect at a point right there. Okay. And there's a single solution to this. Okay. The graphs are different and they have different slopes. Okay, so this example here, okay, the blue line, the slope is negative one. Okay, and the red line, our slope is uh, two. Okay, so our slopes are different. So we're going to end up with one answer. Okay. Now if we look closely at the second example here, the red and blue lines are right on top of each other. Okay. If they're right on top of each other, it means they're actually the same line. Okay. So any point along here satisfies both equations. So if they have what we call infinitely many solutions. They have the exact same slope and the exact same y-intercept. Okay, the third equation, okay, or the sorry, the third scenario that can happen is the lines are parallel to each other, meaning they will never touch, meaning they do not have an, a solution. Okay, there is no x, y that will satisfy both these equations. Okay, so again, they have the same slope but a different y-intercept. Okay, so those are three of these, the only three scenarios that can happen with, again, number one being the most common that we will come across. Okay, so here are two substitution and elimination um, examples. So the first one, x plus y equals negative 9, and x plus 2y equals 25, or sorry, negative 25. Okay. So according to the system of equations above, what is the value of x? Okay. So what we want to use is either substitution or elimination to get rid of all the y's and get x by itself. Now, if you are more comfortable already with using substitution over elimination or the other way around, then always stick, like I said before, always stick with what you are more comfortable with. Okay? Um, I will do an example of each. Okay, for this one, I will use substitution. For the next one, I'll use elimination. Okay? So the first thing I can do to make this make my life a little bit easier here, is in this question, they only want to know what x is. Okay, so if I'm only looking for x, that means I'm trying to get rid of y. Okay? So, first thing I'm going to do, okay, is I'm going to rearrange this first equation here. 
all I'm doing there is just moving the x over. Okay, so I know that y now equals negative 9 minus x. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to now substitute what this is into the other equation for y. Okay, so I have x plus, I still have 2, but now where I see y in the second equation, I'm going to plug in negative 9 minus x. Okay, and that equals negative 25. Okay, and now again, it just comes down to a matter of uh, simplifying our equation and then solving for x. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is I have to distribute in this 2, okay, into the bracket. So I rewrite my x. Now I have 2 times negative 9 which is negative 18, okay, and I also have 2 times negative x, which is negative 2x, okay, that equals, still equals negative 25, okay, and now again, I just want to simplify, okay, so I'm going to collect like terms, I'm going to move all my x's to one side, and my numbers to the other side, okay, so my x's can stay here on the left, and I want to do a plus 18 to get rid of this. Okay, so that gets rid of it. And I'm left with x minus 2x equals negative 7. Okay, we can now simplify this. I have 1x. I've taken away 2x's. So I'm left with negative x equals negative 7. Okay, which now in this case, I don't care about these minus signs anymore, so x just equals 7. Okay. Now, if this equation asked for the x, y, if it asked for both of them, what I would do is now take this 7, x equals 7, and plug back into the top, into one of the equations. Okay, so if I plugged into... The first one here, I would have 7 plus y equals negative 9. Now I would solve y to get y by itself. So I get minus 7 minus 7. I would just be left with y equals negative 16. Okay, but in this equation, they're only looking for x, so we can save ourselves some time by first manipulating the. the system so that I'm only solving for x and not solving for y first and then finding x. That would just be a waste of time. Okay, so I will solve this one by elimination. Okay, the first thing I want to do when using elimination, okay, well first I should notice that in this case now I do need both x and y. It wants x and y, so I need to solve the whole thing. Okay. So first thing I want to do is I want to line up my x's and my y's. Okay. So I'm just going to rearrange these equations. Okay. So I'm going to leave the top the same. Okay. But the bottom one, I'll just flip my x and y over. So I have 3x plus 4y equals negative 23. And I have negative x plus 2y equals negative 19. Okay? So what I have to do when eliminating okay, is I have to make the coefficients of either x or y, I have to make them the same in both equations. Okay? So in this case, if I look, I have a 4y in the first equation. It'll be very easy for me to make this, the bottom, the second equation, also have a 4y. Okay, to do that, I have to multiply the whole equation times 2. Okay, so each value in here is about to get doubled. Okay, so when I do that, 
3x plus 4y again, just rewriting the first equation. Okay, when I have 2 times negative x, I have negative 2x. I have positive 4y. And I have negative 38. Okay, so notice I have a 4y in the first equation and a 4y in the second equation. Okay, so this is where the term in elimination comes from because I'm now getting rid of those y's. Okay, to do that, I have to multiply, or sorry, I have to subtract these two equations together. Okay? And I will now break them up into term by term. That's why I wanted to line them up at the beginning. Okay? So I have 3x minus a negative 2x. Okay? Which these two negatives make a positive, so I have 3x plus 2x. I'm left with 5x. And I have negative 23 minus negative 38. So I have negative 23 plus 38 equals positive 15. Okay, and now, again, I'm back to where I'm used to being. I need to get x by itself, so I divide by 5. Divide by 5. I'm left with x equals 3. Now again, here's where I can save myself some time. Okay, just by looking at the answers and noticing that B is the only one that has x equal to 3. Okay, so automatically I know that my answer is going to be B. Okay, but for our purpose right now, I'll now take this x equals 3, plug it back into one of the equations on the top, it doesn't matter which one, okay, and then solve for y. So I'll plug it into uh, second equation. Okay, so if I were to plug it in, I'd have 2y minus 3 equals negative 19. Okay, I'll go through this quick. Equals negative 16. Divide both sides by 2y equals negative 8. But again, I can save myself some time just by noticing that b was the only one that had x equal to 3. Okay, but those, there are two examples of substitution elimination. Okay, when we do practice tests um, on Tuesday in a little tutorial, we will come across more of these and we'll go through some more. So one of the trickiest parts of the SAT, okay, we'll, we will have to make our own equations and our own system of, of equations, okay? So these are basically word problems, okay? We will always follow the, the regular substitution elimination method, but first, instead of them giving us the equations, we have to come up with them ourselves, okay? So here, uh, again, two more examples that we'll go through. Okay, so a food truck sells salads for six fifty and drinks for two dollars each. Okay, the food truck's revenue from selling a total of two hundred nine salads and drinks in one day was eight thirty six fifty. Okay, how many salads were sold that day? Okay, so first I need to always declare what my variables are. Okay, you can call them at whatever you want. You can call them x y. Um, in this case, it's probably easiest if I say s number of salads okay and B is the number of drinks okay so the easiest way to think about equation or questions like this is you know you need to come up with two equations it's just a matter of what those equations are. Now, the majority of the time, okay, one equation will deal with the quantity, like how many of something that you're dealing with. And the second equation, in this case, will deal with money. Okay? The second equation 
Sometimes uh, our percentages, it can be money, it can be the weight of something. Okay, the second one usually changes, but the first equation typically deals with the quantity or how many of something that you have. Okay, so knowing this, if I look, my first equation, okay, if it's quantity here, I know that the number of salads plus the number of drinks equals 209. Okay, it told me weight here. Okay, now the second equation, in this case I'm dealing with money. I know that drinks were two bucks each, salads were six fifty. So six fifty time or sorry. Did I erase this? Dang it. Shoot. Practical difficulties will restart. Okay, I know S is salads. F is salads. D is drinks. Okay, my first equation was salads plus drinks equals 209. Okay, the second one I'm dealing with money. So salads are 650 each. Okay, so if I sold two salads, that'd be worth 13 bucks. Okay, drinks, two dollars each. Okay, and I know this equals 836.50. Okay. So again, let's save ourselves some time by asking what they're looking for us to solve. Okay, I want to know how many salads. If I want to know how many salads were sold, I need to. I don't care about how many drinks. I want to get rid of the drinks. Okay. So again, uh, I'll leave it up to you about how you solve this one. But go ahead and take a second and try and solve it yourself. So pause the video. Okay, and then I will solve it by um, elimination next. Okay, so solving this by elimination, again, I want to get the number of drinks out of there. Okay, so in this first equation, I need to multiply it all by 2 so that the coefficient here in the second equation is the same as the first equation. Okay, so if I do that, I end up with 2s plus 2d equals 418. rewrite the rest of the equation. Okay. So again, I'm going to subtract them. Go minus. So I end up with 2 minus 650, which is negative 450. S. Those cancel out. So I have 2D minus 2D. That cancels. Okay, and then I have 418 minus 836.50, which I got a punch in my calculator real quick, equals negative 418.50. Okay, I divide by negative 4.5 in this case, okay, and when I do that I end up with S equals B is the answer here. They sold 93 salads that day. Okay. Looking at this next equation. Okay, so suppose you work in a lab. You need a 15% acid solution for a certain test but your supplier only ships a 10% and a 30% solution. So 
rather than pay the hefty surcharge to have the supplier make it for you, you decide to mix 10% with 30% to make your own solution. So you need 10 liters of 15% acid. Um, how many liters of 10% solution and 30% solution should you use? Okay, go ahead and pause the video and try and do this one yourself. Okay, and we will continue on in a second. Okay, so after you've gone through that one yourself, okay, let's look at what the solution is. Okay, so again, first thing I have to do is declare what each of my variables are. In this case, I'll just use x and y. I'll say x, okay, is the amount of the 10% solution we're going to use. Amount of 10%. Okay, y will be the amount of 30%. Okay. So again, I need one equation, I need two equations. The first equation here is going to deal with, again, the quantity. Okay, so how many liters of each I'm going to use. Okay, and the second one in this case will deal with okay, the percentages. So the percentage in this case will give me the amount of acid that is in each. Okay, so again, I know that the amount of liters, okay, from here, I need 10 liters, okay? So my equations are, will be x plus y equals 10, okay? And then this now, I have to account for the percentages of each, okay? So I know that the amount of acid from the first um, solution, will be 0 0.1 times the number of liters. Okay. And then I'll get 0 0.3 times the number of liters of 30% acid. Okay. I just converted these percentages into decimals okay. and then multiplied each variable. Okay. Now, okay. I know that I'll have 10 liters of 15% solution left. Okay. So again, what I did to get number two from number one is I multiplied each of these variables here by the amount of acid that was in each. So I did 0.1 times x, I did 0.2 times y, and I'll do the same for the actual quantity. So I'll do 10 times 0.15, which will give me 1.5. Okay. And then again, substitution or elimination however you want to do it. Okay, let me clear some space here. Okay, so again, I have x plus y equals 10. I have 0 0.1x plus 0 0.3y equals 1. So I did the last one as elimination. I will do this one as substitution. Okay, so doing that, the easiest one to get a variable by itself is the first one because both coefficients are one. Okay, so I don't have to do uh, any division or multiplication to get uh, y by itself. Okay, so I'll get y by itself here. I'll just move the x over. I have y equals 10 minus x. Okay, and then again in in, sorry, substitution, I will take 10 minus x and plug it in for y here. Okay, so when I do that, I end up with 0.1x plus 0.3 times 10 minus x. That again equals 1.5. Okay, and from here, I now solve. So again, I will have to distribute 
x plus 3 minus 0 0.3x equals 1.5. Now x is on one side, numbers on the other. Okay, so I'll kind of go through it quick here, but I'll collect my like terms. So I end up with 0.1x minus 0.3x to get negative 0.2x. And then I'm also doing a minus 3 and a minus 3 here. Okay, so 1.5 minus 3 is negative 1.5. Divide by negative point two. And from there I get x equal to seven point five. Okay? And if I interpret this now, okay, if x equals seven point five, I know that I'm using seven point five liters of ten percent solution. Okay, and that's just from here. To get the amount of 30% solution, okay, again, what I want to do is take x equals 7.5 and plug into one of my original equations. Now, there's a lot of time there will be one equation that's easier to plug into, which in this case is the, is the first equation. Okay, there's no additional math that I have to do. I simply plug in and just solve for y. Okay, if you plugged into the second equation, you would have to multiply 0.1 times 7.5, and then it's just extra work that you don't have to do. Okay, so from here, this would lead to x equals 2.5. Okay, so we use 2.5 liters of the other solution. Now brings us to linear inequalities. Okay, there are a few differences between linear inequalities and linear equations. Okay, but uh, we will set them up and treat them very much the same way as we would linear equations. Okay, so here's a link um, to just an additional website. Uh, it's just a good link summarizing what inequalities are, and you can kind of use it as a refresher. Okay, but basically all Equalities, linear equalities are, is instead of using an equal sign, we use a greater than or less than. Okay? So, facing this way means greater than. Okay? Just meaning that the first number is greater or bigger than the second number. Okay? Facing the other way is less than. So, if I were to flip this, it would be 2 is less than 5. Okay, notice that these two things are the same, okay, just with the inequality flipped over. Okay, so when solving for a variable, variable in this case, we will treat it the same as a linear equation. There's just one difference that we got to keep in mind, okay. If ever we have to divide by a negative number, we must flip the inequality. So I'll do a quick example up here, is say after solving I end up with negative 2x is greater than 4. I still want to get x by itself, so I have to divide by a negative number. Okay, and whenever I do that, I have to flip the inequality the, the other way. If we were dividing by a positive number, okay, say it was just let's 
say it was just 2x greater than 4, and I was dividing by 2, okay, I would keep my inequality facing the same way. Okay, so that is really the only difference when we're trying to solve for these x by themselves. First example here, which of the following numbers is not a solution of the inequality? Okay, so again, I could go back and just take these numbers and plug them in, okay, or I can solve it algebraically. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and solve this algebraically. Okay, how I would say this is 3x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 4x minus 3. Okay, so I treat this again the exact same way. I want x's on one side, and I want the numbers on the other. Okay, so I have a negative 5 there. I want to add 5 to get rid of it. Okay, and to move the, I'll move the 4x over to the other side. I have a positive 4x, so I want to subtract 4x to get rid of that. Okay, so on the left side here, I'm, I end up with 3x minus 4x, which is just negative x. And this is greater than or equal to positive 2. Okay, so now here's one of those negative. I have to divide by a negative. So really what I'm doing here is dividing by negative 1. Okay, again, when I divide by a negative number, I have to flip my inequality. Okay, and I'm left with x is less than or equal to negative 2. Okay, so here's where I'll, I will have to do a little bit, um, a little bit of interpretation. Okay, if this is 0, this is negative 2, this is negative 3. Okay, I'm just making a basic number line. Okay. Now, what this is saying is any number for x that's less than or equal to negative 2, okay, will satisfy this inequality. Okay. Now, Numbers that are smaller than negative 2 are negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and so on. Okay? Negative 1 is actually bigger than negative 2. Okay? And we can kind of look at this and just say, okay, negative 2. Now, this inequality is pointing to the left. So anything to the left of negative 2 satisfies this equation. So negative 2 I know works. Okay, negative 3 works because it's to the left. Negative 5 also works. Okay, and I'm just left with negative 1 is not a solution. Okay, the rest of these is a solution, just negative 1 is not. Okay, so it can be a little bit tricky. Okay, so this one was a little bit tricky because it was asking for what was not a solution. And previously we had be look we had been looking for what is a solution. Okay, but we just do a little bit of interpretation. Okay, we can use the inequality. It's facing left, so I know everything from this number to the left works. Okay, and we're left with just a does not work. Okay. So in the xy plane, okay, the xy plane is just normal graph that we're used to seeing. Okay. If 0, 0 is a solution to the system of inequalities above, which of the following relationships between A and B must be true? Okay. So again, a little bit tricky. Okay. But again, they'll always give us enough information. So here they give me a point. And they say it's a solution to the system. So I know that it works for this one and it works for this one. And so what I want to do with the 0, 0 is the first thing I want to do is just plug it into both equations. OK, 
Okay, so if I plug it into equation one, okay, I got zero is less than negative zero plus a. Okay, well, this doesn't really mean anything. Okay, so I'm left with zero less than a. Okay, so I can also say that a is greater than zero. If a is greater than zero, it's a positive number. Okay, so two, okay, I end up with zero is greater than zero plus b. Again, this doesn't really mean anything. I have zero is greater than b. If I turn these around, b is less than zero. So again, on my number line, if I were to draw a number line here, okay, here's zero. Okay, a is greater than zero. The inequality is pointing to the right. So this is a, all the positive numbers. Okay, this inequality is pointing to the left. So this is b, all the negative numbers. So from here, okay, I just have to interpret what I know a little bit, but I know that if A is positive and B is negative, okay, that A is always going to be greater than B. Okay. So again, a little bit tricky, okay, but the first thing I can always do is plug in the solution that they give me. graphing a system of equations. So we'll do this one in green. We'll do this one in blue. Okay, and we'll have to determine what they mean. Now, again, I'm going to treat this exactly like a linear equation. Okay, so if I'm graphing this green one here, okay, I'm going to graph it as if it was, as if it was y equals 2x plus 1. So positive one is my starting point. Okay. Two over one is the slope. It's a rise over run. So I do that once, I end up there. If I do it again, I end up here. Okay. So my line looks something like this. Okay, now when I'm graphing these, okay, because it's an inequality. Okay, all I need to happen is that y ends up being bigger than 2x plus 1. Okay, so when I'm graphing and I'm greater than, anything up above the line can be a solution. Okay, anything up there can be a solution. Okay, if it was less than, it would obviously be everything below the line. So I'll do the same thing for the blue line here. Okay, so I start at negative one. Okay, my rise over run here is one over two, so my rise is the one. My run is two. I got a line there, I got a line there. Okay. So I connect these. Okay, and again I'm greater in this case. Okay, so again, the solution to this. Again, everything above. Okay. So, this question okay, is asking which quadrant contains no solutions to the system? Okay, again, a solution to the system means it satisfies both. Okay. So, here for instance, okay, is not a solution to the system. It only satisfies the blue equation. Okay, it does not work for the green one. Okay. This point, however, okay, 
it's in blue and green, so it satisfies both those quotes. Okay, so this is looking for which quadrant contains no solutions. Okay, so break it up into, into quadrant by quadrant. Look at quadrant one first. Okay, ask yourself if there, is there a point in here where it crosses blue and green, and the answer is yes. Okay, any point in here. Okay, quadrant two. Okay, I already have a point there. Obviously, all of quadrant two works. Okay, quadrant three. Is there a point in blue and green? Yes, there is. I can put one right there. Okay, and now I'm left with quadrant four. Okay, now the only place that might work is, is above this blue line in here somewhere. Okay, but that doesn't cross into the green. Okay, so in this case, quadrant four contains no solutions. Again, it contains no solutions because it doesn't can't be in a point that is blue and green. Okay. All right, last one. Absolute values. Okay, so an absolute value is just a representation of distance along a number line. Okay, so basically all, all an absolute value does is it, it'll take a negative number and make it a positive number for us. Okay, so in the example here, the absolute value of negative 3 is just positive 3. Okay, so this last example here. Okay, for what value of n is n minus, is the absolute value, absolute value of vertical line, so the absolute value of n minus 1 plus 1 equal to 0. Okay, so I'll go ahead and write that out. The absolute value of n minus 1 plus 1 equals 0. So again, what I want to do here is just solve this like any old equation. Okay, I would do a minus 1 here. So I'm left with the absolute value of n minus 1 equals negative 1. So this right now can never work, okay? Because I know that the absolute value, okay, has to be a positive number. So the absolute value of n minus one has to be positive, okay? This is not a positive number, so it doesn't matter for any number I put in for n, I will never be able to get negative one. Okay, say I put in n equals, uh, We'll say, say negative 3. So the absolute value of negative 3 minus 1, okay, this equals minus 4, but the absolute value always turns things positive, so that's positive 4. Okay, so it doesn't matter what value of n I put in there, I can never end up with a negative number, or D. There's no such value of n. You will not run into, I believe, I'll double check, but I believe there's only one or two absolute value questions on there. Okay, but just know that it takes a negative number and turns a positive number. Okay, so the practice. Okay, again, uh, here is the uh, website. It comes straight from the people that write the test. So this will be the best um, representation of the questions you will get. Okay. You will get a nice answer off to the side once you put in your response. Okay, it'll give you a nice detailed explanation of which one the right answer is. Okay, so as you're going through these, okay, the questions that deal with what we talk about today are attached right here. Okay, so for this first part, you're allowed to use a calculator here on these questions. Okay, you are not allowed to use one. Okay, now when you actually write the test, they will come around, make sure your calculator is put away. Okay, so 
make sure you're challenging yourself on this on these second questions here. Okay, and you typically you don't you won't need one. Okay, but just get in the habit of not using them. Okay. So that is it for today. We will go through practice tests on Tuesday. Okay, and we'll any questions you have from this PowerPoint, from this presentation, bring them up and we'll go through those as well. Okay?